All right, let's get started. Now, we've been working with the mass and spring system for a while. We've actually just been talking about it in a fairly abstract way. So I just want to try and give a couple of really basic uh, plug and chug exercises in this video just to really enforce what we've been doing. So let's do some examples. So first example, we have our ever so famous mass and spring system. Now, the spring has a stiffness K and the block has a mass M. Now let's say that in this particular case, the mass of the block is four kilograms and the stiffness of the spring is 16 newtons per meter. Now, what, I want, what we want to try and do in this video is try and figure out what x is as a function of time for the given uh, initial conditions of an initial displacement of five meters and an initial velocity of 0.5 meters per second. Essentially saying that at time t equals zero, we start off by displacing our system from equilibrium by five meters and then before we actually let go, we also push it. So it has a certain initial velocity of 0.5 meters per second. So let's try and figure out what x is as a function of time. We know that the general solution for this system will be something of the form a cosine omega t plus b sine omega t. So what we're going to try and do is try and figure out what omega is and try and figure out what a and b are. So let's just start with omega. We know that omega is, def as we defined it, as the square root of k divided by m. So let's just plug in, let's try and see if we can get a value for omega. We know that k is 16 newtons per meter, and we know that the mass is 4 kilograms. Now, in order to make this work out, let's just try and write what newtons is in a different value. And just one little mnemonic to help me remember it, I know that we all know that since the force is equal to mass times acceleration, the units of force, newtons, are equal to the units of mass, kilograms, times the, unit, times the units of acceleration, meters per second squared. So that means one newton is one kilogram times meter per second squared. So that means that a newton per meter is just a kilogram per second squared, just dividing by m on both sides. So let's just write that in here. We're going to get kilogram per second squared. Now divided by kilogram makes sense. So the kilograms will cancel, and we're going to get the square root of 16 divided by 4 is 4, and that's going to be 1 over second squared. Now let's just take the square root. Since most frequencies are positive, we're just going to take the positive value. So we're going to be left with 2, and then 1 over the square root of 1 over second squared is just going to be 1 over second, or hertz. So our fre angular frequency is 2 hertz. Okay, so we know what omega is. Now what we'll do now to find our particular solution with these initial conditions is we say that since we know what the, the position is at time t equals zero, we'd just find out what one of the, well, and we know what the uh, initial velocity is at time t equals zero, would plug in uh, t, t equals zero here, then would take the derivative of this, find v of t, plug in t equals zero here, and set the, them equal to these two. But we did then the last video, or a couple of videos ago, and we found out that x of t, t is equal to x naught cosine omega t plus v naught divided by omega sine omega t. So we know what x naught is, we know what v naught is, and we know what omega is. So let's just plug them all in. So we get that x as a function of time is 5 meters times cosine of omega times t, which is just 2t plus v naught is 0.5 meters per second, and we're dividing that by 2 hertz or 2 1 over seconds. And if you notice, the units will cancel out, so we'll just be left with meters. 
So it's 0.5 meters per second divided by one of the second, it's just meters. And that is times sine of 2t. And now let's just simplify it up. We get that x of t is 5 cosine 2t plus 0.5 is 1 half divided by 2. We're going to get 1 fourth sine of 2t. So we did it. Just wanted to give like one basic example and like just giving a sense of what the physical values are. It's handy to try and make sure that all these units work out. So we know that 5 is from our x naught is 5 meters. And we know that this term here is in meters. And we know that cosine and sine are unitless. So everything is in terms of meters, which works out. Okay, so that was fairly easy. So let's do a slightly different problem. Oops, right in space. Let's just go up here. Okay, so for this problem, we're going to have the same horizontal mass and spring system. I'm going to say that the mass in this case is, let's say, 0.5 kilograms. But I'm not going to tell you what K is. We don't know what the stiffness of the spring actually is. And let's say that our initial conditions are we're going to start off by displacing it 5 meters again. But we're not going to give it an initial velocity. We're just going to displace it and let go. So V0 is 0 meters per second. Now, one of, uh, let's just say that we actually do it out, and we notice that while it's moving, we notice that it goes 20 cycles of oscillation in 80 seconds. Now what I want to try and do is, for this example, let's try and figure out what the period is, what the angular frequency is, what the stiffness of the spring is, and finally what x is as a function of time. Pause it if you'd like, try and work it out yourself if you want, but let's just do it out now. We know that the period is equal to the time it takes to go oops, one, uh, for one cycle. So if we can do 80 seconds for 20 cycles, that means that we our period is 4 seconds per cycle, or just four seconds. Okay, so now that we know what our period, let's try and figure out what the angular frequency is. We know that angular frequency omega is equal to two pi divided by our period. Which, and let's just plug in what t is, so we get two pi divided by four seconds. So we get that our angular frequency is pi over two uh, one, over, 1 over a second, so just pi over 2 hertz. As we talked about in the last video, you can, try, you can uh, say if you like that the angular frequency is pi over 2 radians per second. Again, the radians isn't actually physical, but it helped, well, I shouldn't say physical, but it's dimensionless, but it just helps us keep track of what we're dealing with. So now that we know what omega is, let's try and figure out what k is. We know that we defined omega is equal to the square root of k divided by m. So let's try and isolate this k here. So let's square both sides. So we get omega squared is equal to k divided by m. And let's multiply by m on both sides. So we get k is equal to m times omega squared. All right. So we know what m is. We know what our omega is. So let's just plug them in and try and find out what k is. So k is equal to, here we go, m is 0.5 kilograms. And we're going to multiply that by pi over 2, and that's in 1 over seconds, squared. So pi over 2 squared, that's, that's just going to be pi squared over 4 in units of 1 over seconds squared. And we're multiplying that by 0.5 or 1 half. So we get our k is equal to 
pi squared divided by 8 kilograms per second squared. Again, notice that although radians is our unit, we don't actually use it here since it's not actually a physical dimension. So we get that K doesn't have actually have terms of, well, units of radians in it. Okay, so now last but not least, let's try and figure out what X of T is. We know that X of T is going to be of the form X naught cosine omega T plus V naught divided by omega sine omega T. So we know what our omega is here, and we know that from, oops, from our initial conditions, that x naught is 5 and v naught is 0. So since v naught is 0, this term will just go. So we're going to get x of t is equal to 5 times cosine of omega, which is pi over 2 t. And there we go. So that wasn't too bad. Just want to give some really basic exa examples and we'll carry on in the next video.